the E head has a, a full taper through down into the shank through here whereas a city head has an established end there then shank some of the E heads some of your MX and LX nails have uh, they're stamped and so they have an established transition as well so because this is a drawn nail and we're punching for it we'll use the same measurement we have these two little bevels on the top that much of the nail is going to stick up out of the shoe when we're finished that's our depth so if I measure from the established shank portion on the city head you'll see it's three sixteenths of an inch so if I use that same measurement here, my line is way up here, but I still have movement or thickness before I reach the shank size. So I, on the E head, I'm going to use a little, a little more depth to try to get down closer to that. I come down to my lines. Okay, so those two areas are what, what I'm dealing with, with whether I'm going to fuller or I'm going to punch. So the four punch is only dealing with the blackened areas on the nail, right? So on a four punch, that's the depth that I want of it, only to there. So we'll measure up that quarter of an inch. And that is all the depth I need on the four punch. When it's pushed into the material, that's that's as deep as it goes. So now I want this little blackened spot to match the dimensions of that blackened spot. So either going over the top of it and the side or I can build myself a gauge Let's go back and put the nail in there first. Oh, I see that where I'll line this up with the top of my gauge, that line. And where does it fall? It falls just at the very beginning of the circle. So that's the depth right to the where the circle starts from there to there. That's the depth of the nail that I want. I can also check the opposite side. Same thing. So now I can use this as I'm setting up my tool. So I can see now that if I, if I line up that line with the very top like I did before, that this four punch is a little bit narrower than it than that nail. It needs to be backed up and thickened. Same thing with this, just a little bit. So it needs to be backed up on its end. Now that we've established our depth here, we know how far we want to be. Now we have to pay attention to the configuration and the dimensions of the tip. I said we were going to have to back it up in order to get the thickness to match the nail by backing this tool up my end is going to be larger than the shank but how do I know that so I want to build myself a gauge to know exactly the dimension of the shank of that nail where my line ended there that what we talked about before that's going to be the depth of my four punch 
And that is where the next two tools are going to come into play. All right, so in order to determine what that dimension is right at the bottom of that line, I'm going to take a pop can, an aluminum can. So I'm going to put it in the bottom of the pop can. Okay, so now I'm just taking tap that down until we reach that line. Like so. So then I just pull the nail out. And that is the dimension of the shank right at the base of our four punch. So I can use this now as a guide When I bring in the base of that four punch, and I can set it up back and forth, I can look at all the dimensions. I, I want it to just, just set into that hole. I don't want it to go in, bury out. I don't want it to be on top of it. I just want it to just set in there. You can see that it matches it pretty well, just the way it is.